All right, this is case uh, five. What is this beauty? I uh, guess I can take this. This, I think, is like the quintessential um, gimme for uh -huh. um, paniculitis kind of things or fatty tumor kind of things. Um, and uh, so these are fat cells um, that we don't usually see in adults. And they kind of look like mulberries. Um, and so this is just like a great gimme for a hibernoma. Yeah, very good. This is a hibernoma, a benign neoplasm of brown fat. So it's not a paniculitis at all. Of course, it's here as a, a potential distractor to try to trick you. But uh, it is brown fat. And so basically normal, regular brown fat, uh, which is usually more common in, in younger kids, um, but rarely we can see a little bit in adults, but usually more in the deeper soft tissues, not in the, not in the subcutis. So, uh, like it's, it's more common, like around the neck, sometimes you can see it around the kidneys, but, uh, so I occasionally see little wisps of brown fat in adults, but like you said, it is much more common in, in kids, but this tumor, uh, is a neoplasm of brown fat. It actually usually does occur in adults, in young adults, the most common, uh, kind of presentation. My, and it's, it's, I think a little unfair that it's a thing that's taught to dermatologists because I have personally never seen a case in the skin. I think I've seen one or two that were subcutaneous. Uh, but still, they usually are like when they present their larger, deeper masses. I, I have never seen a hibernoma removed by a dermatologist, to my recollection. Always come out by from surgeons. It's usually because they're either big or they're deep. Uh, at least that's been my experience. So maybe maybe with enough time, I'll see one. But in any case, it's so beautiful that like, why not teach about it? Because it's so, so pretty. It's it's definitely one of my favorite uh, prettiest tumors and it's benign and beautiful. So we're, we have a combo of three different types of fat cells in brown fat and in hibernomas, okay? So there's a mixture of regular old white fat, the, the adult type of fat, these big white ones that look just like regular fat cells, and then the bubbly, multivacuulated mulberry cells, the cells that look really similar to lipoblasts, right? The only reason this is not like a pleomorphic lipoblast is because the nucleus is really uniform. It's not ugly and pleomorphic. But in some forms of liposarcoma, you can occasionally see lipoblasts that look like this. So the key here is that the overall pattern is brown fat. All the nuclei look just alike. Uh, and again, I, this scan doesn't have a great high power, but the nuclei of brown fat, they're like large, kind of large and very round and have a big central nucleolus. And then, so they might look a little atypical compared to say a normal white fat cell, which has a more thin, flattened, spindled or plate-like nucleus. These are like big round guys with a big eyeball of nucleolus staring back up at you, but all of the nuclei look just alike. So it's, uh, it's, if you have never stared closely at the hibernoma nucleus, I've seen people look at these and get worried by that. But uh, once you look at them, all hypernomes look like this. This is just normal and normal brown fat looks like this. So then the, the third cell type, so I said there's white fat, the bubbly multivacuulated, little white vacuoles that often indent and compress the nucleus uh, or scallop into the nucleus, just like how in sebocytes we get that. We get that same thing here because these are lipid filled vacuoles, right? And the body is a water based, right? Where we are basically an aqueous solution. So what happens when you put an oil in water, it has to make a little spherule because it can't mix with the water. So the same thing, that's why we get these perfectly round vacuoles and they push the nucleus out of the way because the nucleus has got water content the vacuoles are made of lipid. The reason to belabor all that is when you see clear, sharply circumscribed vacuoles, there that's a clue that they're probably really lipid based vacuoles, like a, like a bubbly mulberry cell or in a sarcoma, like a lipoblast or in a epithelial tumor. If you see that in the skin, maybe it's, these are adipocytes, maybe it's an adipocytic neoplasm. So that pattern of, of clear vacuoles bumping into the nucleus is useful to say, this is probably a lipid vacuole. And you can apply that across uh, multiple things. Even when they're tiny little lipid vacuoles, like a foam cell or a xanthomatous cell, same thing. If you go really, really close, you can see those tiny little lipid vacuoles, sometimes bumping in and scalloping and denting the nucleus. All right, so finally, back to the, I, I've gone off on multiple tangents, white fat, bubbly mulberry cells, and then the red cells, the red, pink, grainy, granular cells, which may or may not have some vacuoles. These cells, and again, you can't see it on this scan, the texture, they have a very granular, uh, stippled, speckled appearance that gives them this reddish grainy look. And those cells have that red grainy look because they're filled with what type of cellular organelle? Anyone know? They are full of 
mitochondria. And that's because brown fat's function basically is to make heat, right? Uh, like that's like hibernoma, like in hibernating animals, like bears, they have a lot of brown fat, makes heat, keeps them warm in the winter. That's the, the basic, basic uh, you know, story of what brown fat's supposed to do. I think it has much more limited um, uh, importance for us as humans, but, but in any case, uh, maybe, maybe we don't know, maybe there's more mysteries to unlock. I know some people are researching brown fat for like weight loss and things like that. Uh, and, uh, in any case, uh, the granular pink appearance is because there are a lot of mitochondria here. Okay. So that's the, those three cell types can be present in varying proportions in a hibernoma. Some hibernomas look almost just like a lipoma with only a little bit of the mulberry cells and the reddish granular cells, uh, sp sprinkled in there. And then some are like loaded with the red grainy cells and loaded with the bubbly cells. Of course, these are the pretty ones that we like to put in study sets and on tests because they're way more beautiful. But I, I honestly see more kind of white fat predominant hibernomas in practice uh, because because uh, I think that they just don't get put in study sets because they're more boring. You know, they're prettier when they look like this. And oh, look at how many. There's a bajillion little capillary sized vessels, just like in the fat lipoatrophy, just like in a lipoma with fat necrosis. It, the, the little vessels are there between every fat cell, they are capillaries. And so we're seeing those are just really dilated here. And then this particular case was down deep in the, in the muscle, which is where I usually see hibernomas. And, uh, and again, they're usually in young adults. They can be kind of large sometimes, 8, 10, 12 centimeters, even more. And they on, if you get an MRI, they look like fat signal, but they look denser than fat signal. So they'll have areas that look similar to fat, but other areas that are clearly more cellular, uh, more water content, not lipid content. Uh, if you're a radiologist listening and I'm misexplaining that how the wonders of MRI, I'm sorry. It is very complicated, I think. Um, the reason uh, I bring that up is that this is a tumor that is on imaging a potential mimic of liposarcoma because people, all radiologists will see this is a big fatty tumor in the deep soft tissue and it's got areas that do not look like normal fat. So that always concerns you that maybe it is a liposarc, but the uh, other the other thing to keep in mind is that, that you know, an unusual looking fatty tumor on imaging could be liposarcoma, but it also could be hibernome. And look at the beautiful striations in the skeletal muscle there. Oh, if you don't like that, I can't make you happy. It's just so cool to see something so symmetric inside, you know, an organic uh, uh, structure. All right. I think you can tell I like hibernomas a lot. Benign and beautiful. Okay, six.